Hi everyone, super excited to have you guys back to another bonus episode for our 26 Days to Greatness Challenge. And today with me on this workshop, we have Veronica Abrams, who's been an entrepreneur for 10 years and she has a visual branding agency that empowers speaker, speakers and podcasters on how they can um, utilize visual branding to um, you know, grow the business and the brand. And she is also a podcast host. And today we are going to be discussing about core values and why that is so essential when it comes to us stepping into our greatness and becoming the leaders that we are meant to be. So with that being said, Veronica, thank you for being on here today. I'm so excited to have you. Thank you, Miko. Thanks so much for having me. This is a pleasure and I'm just so honored and I'm so excited to talk about this topic. It's so close to my heart and I truly believe it's life changing. I know everybody feels like that about what they talk about, which is great because I know that they're going to bring awesome value, but I'm, uh, I'm super excited and feel blessed that I can, I can do this. Thank you. Yeah, I'm so excited. Veronica, I know, like I, you know, we talked about this before camera when we first connected and I did some research on you. I know that you came from like a, you know, a past that were pretty challenging and you really stepped up and tapped into your potentials and like completely changed your life around. So I would love for you to share with our audience today about your story. Um, how did you get to where you're at today? Ooh, wild ride. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, I mean, I've been an entrepreneur for 10 years. Um, I've realized recently why I, I have ADHD. Um, so that's why I probably had to, you know, plow my own path, not knowing exactly why at the time. But, um, you know, three years ago, I went through my own rock bottom moment. So here I am. And I think my whole life is like gung ho. Great. And in span of six weeks, everything fell apart. My partner came to me, said that, you know, he wasn't in love with me anymore. Um, my mother moved away. My whole, you know, friend group was gone because it was so connected to this um, relationship. My best friend and her husband, the only one that knew that there was any problems, moved to Spain. And I turned 30 to crickets. So this is like six weeks, no partner, friends gone, best friend gone, um, you know, hitting this milestone. And, you know, I talk about my personal life and how everything happened, but that definitely impacted my business. Not only that, but I'd realized that my life was built on quicksand. Everything disappeared at once. And, you know, obviously things happen, events happen in your life and you don't have necessarily control over everything. But I think that there's some, there's a key component of taking radical responsibility that we need to, to really identify. And I realized that I had made choices along the way. Now I say I realized I actually spiraled for about a year. I went into dark depression, drugs, alcohol addiction. Uh, nobody knew because I was able to keep it together on the outside. Um, but yeah, everything kind of collapsed. And when I did come to that point of taking radical responsibility, I was like, what, what is that key component? Where did I go wrong? Cause I really feel like I'm a good person. And I think a lot of people feel like that where they're like, I'm a good person. I don't deserve this, right? Like, have you ever had that where somebody, you know, was a friend and turned their back on you or a relationship or business, you went all in with a company and gave your best and you still, you know, were, were you know, fell short. Mm -hmm. And you're like, I'm a good person. I don't deserve this. How many times have we said that to ourselves? And I realized that I believed this lie, this like Disney lie, that if you're a good person, you're gonna have a good life. And that's a lie. I'm gonna say it right there. And, and I know when I say that, it really cuts deep to some people. And I know right now, a lot of people are actually feeling a lot of pain with what's going on with the whole like COVID-19. And a lot of people have had like the rug swept, you know, from under them. And again, there's events that are not your fault, but then you kind of look at your life holistically and you're like, why does the culture of my life not resemble the things that are truly close to me and, and mean something to me? You know, wh what went amiss? So in my own personal journey, I made a commitment. I was like, okay, if I figure this out, I'm going to use my knowledge to help other people. And I talk about my personal life, but so many people now we're going into this, this different era of really building personal brands. Mm -hmm. So your what's going on in your personal life and the, and your true North and people talk about being aligned that it, your, your personal core values 
are your business brand core values? And for me, I realized how integral core values were and that I was living in conflict to them. I was saying things were important to me, but living in conflict or out of alignment with them, constantly breaking promises. Um, as an empath, you know, basically compromising my needs, um, my values, and putting other people's first. Mm -hmm. So really, you know, we think of core values for startups, right? It's super trendy. But as people are building their personal brands, and even just the life, the culture within their life that they want to cultivate, core values are so integral, and they have been um, ignored for quite some time. And this is the secret sauce, at least for me, where I went from three years ago being addicted to drugs and depression, you know, some really dark times to now building an agency and, you know, a top rated podcast that I was not, I was, you know, obviously hoping for good things, but I didn't necessarily have this in mind that, you know, Hero Academy podcast would be ranked top 50 in five countries in entrepreneurship. That's crazy. That's not what I, I ever imagined. So I don't, I don't really look at that and think, okay, well, I made this happen, but I did create a culture where this magic started to happen. And that's what I really want for other people as they're now having to pivot and start over. This is really the prime time to come back to center and find your true north. This is so good. Wow, we started off really nicely. <laughs> so core values, like you mentioned, I think that's something that is missing in so many of our lives. But this is not something that was ever taught in, in us in school. Nobody taught us like what, what core value even is or means to us. So how do we get a better understanding, first of all, what that means? And then how do we know what our personal core values are? Yeah, absolutely. So core values, when I think of core values, I think of our true north. And, uh, you know, that's okay that people don't know because I hit 30 again. I hit this milestone. And if somebody was to ask me, what are your core values? I wouldn't have been able to tell them three decades into my life, you know? So I'm not coming at this in any way judgmental. I'm just saying it's super imperative and I didn't have it. <laughs> and that's why it was, uh, you know, a mess in my life, you know, obviously it, it, sometimes things fall apart slowly. And for me, it, it just fell apart all at once, which I think was a blessing in disguise because it was <laughs> difficult to ignore. But so when it comes to, I'm, I'm going to go back maybe a little bit before, like, how do you identify it? And I'm going to talk a little bit more about if that's okay, just why mm -hmm. it's important. So there's a few th things I kind of mentioned there. So the culture, you know, and we think of like company culture, mm -hmm. but what about your life culture? Right. And you have to intentionally cultivate that. Again, you don't have a good life simply because you're a good person. You have a good life because, and a good business and a good brand, and you're thriving in every single way of your life, in your life, because you are intentionally cultivating a culture. So if you think about your life, your brand, your business, I'm going to use all these things interchangeable because they are right now interchangeable for a lot of people and they should be. Um, Think of it as like you're the queen, king, empress, emperor of your city, okay? You've got these, uh, you've got these gates or you've got like a wall around it, right? With a gate. So it's twofold. There's one, how you operate within your city walls, right? That's going to establish a culture. But two, it's what you allow in. So it's twofold. You know, a lot of times people are like, I'm being loving and kind, but then you're actually allowing people in your life who are stealing your joy, stealing your peace. They're not operating in a, in a, you know, a place of, uh, one of my core values is love. And I define that as operating from a place of compassion, compa uh, compassion, respect, no, honor, compassion, respect towards others and myself. Yeah. So that being said, it's twofold. Like if somebody comes into or wants to get into the gate of my city, are you going to be operating from a place of kindness, compassion, and respect towards me? If you're not, you don't get in. That's just, that's the, that's the, the thing that you need to have. So um, I think we forget sometimes that that's what's really imperative for culture. Um, and the second Veronica, part is, yeah. Before absolutely. you get to the second part, I just want to point out how, like it was a aha moment for me, like listening to the, the way that you explained that, because I feel like a lot of times we are so focused on like what, um, how we're operating within within the boundaries, but we don't completely forgot about like 
even setting the boundaries for people to come in because i i'm guilty of this i'm guilty of like just being so passionate and loving and kind to others but then i kind of just like don't set those boundaries when they don't respond in the same way as i do because i thought i was being nice <laughs> but actually that's not living in alignment with what i value so that was a really good one <laughs> yeah absolutely and and i would i'm gonna say Okay, one of the most empowering, uh, like my old business before I moved to California here and started my agency uh, was in home renovations and design. Mm -hmm. So um, one of the most empowering moments in my business life was when I fired a client. Mm -hmm. um, I had a bad, you know, bad juju about them. Mm -hmm. um, when I went to their home, the couple was really uh, bickering and not respectful to each other. But, you know, there's that thing in your mind, okay, whatever, it's the family business, I'm not, you know, it could be a bad day. I had a bad feeling, though, because it just seemed to be, like, not a one-off moment. It was, like, seemed to be their thing. And, uh, and then even before the project started, I was actually ahead of schedule. I was, like, you know, on the ball, because that's me. <laughs> and, uh, um, yeah, and then they ended up being that way towards me. So even before I started, and I was, like, you know what, here's your deposit. How do you want it back? And they did not like that. And then they tried to apologize and all this kind of stuff. And I was like, no, there's consequences to actions. And it's not me being vindictive. Again, I'm sorry, but it's not, it's not worth my peace of mind. And it's not worth the money. It really isn't. Do you know why? Because this is going to steal the energy for me to be able to serve other people. There's other people in your life. There's other people in the gates of your city. Okay. If you have one bad apple there, you're hurting everybody. You've got a responsibility. That's what I'm saying is, Think about it in the, in the sense of you are the king or queen, you know, is it okay to bring somebody in that's going to pull somebody else's hair? No, it's not. <laughs> Even this if it's not so yours. <laughs> yeah, Veronica, and, and as you were explaining that, my mind was just connecting the thoughts and I can totally see this too in relationships. Like when, when we are like letting, when we are just continuously not setting those boundaries for the way that people um, may treat us or anything like that, we are, I love when you said that they're stealing your energy away from you being your best to another person that is, mm -hmm. you know, ready to receive that kind of behavior. Oh, that was so exactly. good. <laughs> I'm glad it's connected. And you know what, again, I'm, I'm a empathetic person. I will give you the shirt off my back. I will. But that's the thing is like, you've got to protect that as well. You've got to protect that. Cause there are people that once you take some time to again, cultivate that culture, you're going to see that you're going to create a different atmosphere and tribe. I am so, so blessed. I went from having nobody, all these people turning their back on me to friends that would like go to war for me. And mm -hmm. I would do the same for them. And to have that is such a blessing and it takes time. I was alone for a long time. I was alone for a long, long time. Uh, like it was probably six months or a year of being very intentional before friends started trickling in and collaborations on all these things. And then it snowballed, but, but yeah, it was lonely for months, year um, before, but it's so worth it. It, it. You know, I'd rather not have somebody there than have somebody there stealing my piece. Um, yeah. So yeah, definitely that culture twofold, how you operate and what you allow in. Mm, I love that. Okay. So that was part one that you were going in before I cut you off. Yeah. You hey, it it's okay. <laughs> this is Just a safe space. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. And as I mentioned right now, a lot of people are building their business based off of a personal brand. So, uh, you know, I'm a brand strategist and core values, even within visual branding is something that we really get into because I want to take that message and I want to make sure to communicate it visually and in every way across the board. So, you know, having a solid brand identity, you know, solid brand, what you're known for, what are you known for? If somebody was to say, oh yeah, Veronica, she's the X, Y, Z, or you can really go to her for this. Or you know what? She's so amazing. I remember when, like, what's the brand identity? What's your personal identity? And so going back to like what my aha moment was, was, so there's a quote by Ed Milet. He talks about every promise you keep, um, it, well, sorry, you build your confidence by learning to keep promises to yourself. That's how you build 
your self-confidence. People think it's the body, the swimsuit body, all these kind of things, you know, the perfect marriage, the perfect boyfriend, the perfect wedding, whatever. Um, that's not what's going to give you confidence. It's not going to be the money in your account, nothing like that. Okay. The way you build self-confidence is by learning to keep promises to yourself. Taking that a step further into explaining core values, every choice you make in alignment with your core values builds a strong sense of personal identity. If there's anything that anybody can take away from this for life or business, every choice you make in alignment with your core values builds a strong sense of personal identity. And I know that to be true because let's flip it on its head. Every choice you make in conflict with your core values will chip away at your identity. And that's where I was because I came to a place where I was like, I don't know who I am. So if we think Veronica. that. Sorry, that was so good. Can you repeat that again? Every choice so, you make in so alignment. So twofold. Let's go to the beginning twofold. So every yeah. choice you make in alignment with your core yeah. values will build a strong sense of personal identity. It'll keep reinforcing that over and over and over again until you're solid. Every choice you make in conflict to your core values will chip away and degrade your identity. I love it. And Thank that's, you. I know, I know that's true. Cause how many times have we maybe dated somebody and then at the mm -hmm. end of it, you're like, I don't even know who I am. Or you've gone through your business. You went, you know, you know, head first into it. And at the end you're exhausted and everything. You're like, I don't even know why I started this. Right. Yeah. So that's the thing is you've got to come back to center and that kind of leads me also into the next point, which is mm -hmm. that it keeps you on trajectory, right? Like when you have core values, you're like, this is what I'm about. Cause there's going to be so many options and so many choices and so many things that can come and distract you. And I'm not even yeah. saying that something could be good or bad. It just might not be what you're about. Again, think about the culture, mm -hmm. think about your goal. Like it'll keep you on trajectory. You need to be in alignment with that. You know, people talk about purpose, purpose. I'll, I'll, I'll put this little bonus in here because people are like, what is my purpose? Purpose is not one thing. It's dynamic. It's not static. Mm -hmm. And you can have multiple purposes and they can even change over time. But purpose needs to be aligned with your why, which is your core values. Mm -hmm. Your what is your passions and purpose is felt in the how. It's in the space in between and it is in motion. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we have something that's aligned with our core values, but we're not passionate about it, right? And we don't feel that, you know, sense of purpose. Then we have something that may be, you know, in line with what we're passionate about, but we don't go about it in a way that's aligned with our core values, you know, the misstep there. So mm -hmm. keeping you on trajectory, you need to know your core values because right. you're, you're going to have so much opportunity to be distracted. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. so important, important for life and for business. And that's how you self audit. If you're curious about how to self audit, go back to your core values. I totally resonate with that. Like on my entire entrepreneurship journey, I just see like there are so many opportunities that come my way. And then one time I even took up an opportunity that, you know, on the service, it looks amazing. I was offered this opportunity to partner up with another like leadership society that taught pretty much similar work to what I love to do, but in a very like different method. And then I said yes to it because it looked good on the outside of opportunity, but it was not in alignment with me and what I believed in. So every time I would like do the work related to that, I would feel that sense of heaviness and that I didn't feel like I was being me until eventually I said no. And it felt liberating. Like that, that mm -hmm. sense of freedom that I gained and it kept me focused on on my true path. So totally relate to that. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, I just posted this. I don't know if you saw my Facebook today for my podcast. I mean, I've, I've been really blessed. I've had some amazing guests. There were people who I thought on paper looked really good. And I had them on the podcast that like multimillionaires, Wall Street Journal, like authors. And it was awful. Like I, I just didn't jive. Something just didn't, you know, attitude maybe they were tired I'm not really sure what was but what was coming across in the interview was not not the spirit of my podcast um mm -hmm. and maybe again maybe they really are egotistical maybe they're tired I don't really know but that being said 
I'm not going to air those episodes. And I've, I've talked to other podcasters because I was kind of new in the space. I was like, hey, like, have you had this happen? Like, again, I just didn't expect it because you think somebody looks so great. You're so great. Like, yeah. happy that you booked them and all this kind of stuff. And then they um, it did not jive at all. And yeah. I've, I've heard pos- podcasters, and I'm sure this goes for any business, be like, yeah, I guess I'll post it, you know, because it'll bring people in or listeners. Mm-hmm. But I'm thinking, no, I'm not for sale. If this person, I don't care what kind of title they have, if they don't align, if their spirit is not there for the podcast to really serve and speak to people, then no, I don't care. I'd rather get there slower because I know if I was a listener tuning in, I wouldn't care about somebody's title. I'd be like, this is speaking to my heart, to my spirit, to my soul or not. And if it's not, I don't care what kind of extensions they have on their name. <laughs> uh huh. Oh, I love that, that you're really just standing strong in your integrity to what you believe in and you really protect that. You really live up to it and that that gives you power. I can feel it. I can feel that personal sense of power that you have within you just by standing strong behind what you what you stand for. Um, so my question to you, Veronica, like, uh, you know, our listeners listening right now, they might be like, oh, this makes total sense. Like, But how did you personally get so much clarity around your core values? Were there certain things that supported you in getting clarity or that just kind of evolved into a picture for you? (laughs) So I think it's important to identify those things. And you may even look at them again and you're like, this is the culture I want to have. This is really, I might not be there, but this is what I want. And that's okay. You know, you've got to be gracious. I think you that you can, I think that you could take radical responsibility Mm-hmm. and still be compassionate with yourself. Um, mm-hmm. You know, they say that comparison is the thief of joy. Shame yeah. is the thief of motivation. Shame will keep you behind. I have been completely honest and open about my past. Drugs, everything, all. I don't hide from that. I don't need to give all the details. But that being said, I don't feel shame. I look back on that version of myself and I feel compassion for her. You know why? Because she was hurting. It wasn't like I was trying to mess up my life. No, it was because I was hurting. And So I had to come to a place, one, of taking radical responsibility, but two, being compassionate and understanding it's a journey. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about how to identify your core values and then two, how to start stepping into it. And that's the thing too, is we talk about being in alignment. It's like, I hear people say this, be in alignment, but be in alignment with what? (laughs) What are you being (laughs) in alignment with? It's it's really important because I've heard people talk about going with your gut and I am not a strong believer in that kind of, but kind of not. And I'll tell you why. So if you have self-limiting beliefs, you're going to have self-limiting feelings. Mm -hmm. So it depends where on the journey you are. I can trust my gut a lot more now than I did three years ago. But that being said, I always go back to my core values to self audit. So Mm -hmm. our feelings, we can't truly honor them if we believe that they're based in truth. The purpose of your feelings are to show you how you perceive yourself and the world around you. It's a tool to understand how you perceive things, not if if you're perceiving them as being true, okay? So we can't really honor our feelings if what we're saying is this is true or I should go with my gut, okay? That's why we go back to core values because I know for myself and you can think about yourself. There's probably a text message, an email or something that if it came up on a notification on your phone right now and you read it would trigger you, right? Mm-hmm. Your feelings, yeah. your emotions, you know, mm-hmm. somebody's like, uh, your car got broken into, or, you know, who knows something could happen and your, and your feelings would change like that. <laughs> right. So you can't yeah. really truly honor them. If you're thinking whatever I'm feeling is true. It's like, why am I feeling that way? You know, what's triggering me right now? Like, what is this based in? Then you can kind of dive a little bit deeper, but core values are solid principles. These are unchanging. Um, In identifying your core values, you know, you got to keep it simple too, because we can't do all this stuff. So for me, I thought about the culture I wanted to cultivate. And I identified five core values. And again, I have a worksheet that I'll provide to you and anybody listening. So uh, five core values. So mine are love, integrity, Mm -hmm. gratitude, courage, and authenticity. Those are my five. I was like, you know what? And when I I literally Googled core values (laughs) (laughs) and uh, 
And when I did that, I, I got some answers. Then I created like this worksheet with a whole bunch of different um, values. And I looked at this. Okay. Now the first three came up really easily, but I was like, you know, what? I'm going to pick five. I think five sounds good. <laughs> Okay. So this isn't like, obviously this wasn't super uh, crazy methodology, but I was like, fine, I could do five. So the um, courage and authenticity, those ones came a little bit later. I, I spent about two weeks really, really thinking and journaling about this. Mm-hmm. So then I had to define it because you know what, the way I define something and the way you de- define it, it could be different and that's okay. Yeah. But you need to be clear on that. So uh, love, for example, to come from a place of kindness, compassion, and respect towards others and myself. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's how I I defined it. So I call that a guiding principle. So you've got your core values and then define them clearly for you, a guiding principle. Uh, Integrity. What's proof of integrity? People talk about integrity all the time. What does it mean? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, integrity, I feel like if you want proof of what integrity is, it's when your words and your actions align. Those two Mm -hmm. things are the same. Okay. Now, one, I'd recognize I'd been allowing people in my life that said one thing, but acted differently. Right. And that's not okay. Then I also looked at myself and I thought, you know what? I'm the yes person. I try to please everybody. And sometimes I overcommit. Sometimes I say that yes to things and I can't follow through. Mm-hmm. So I should be very careful with my word. It's better to say, you know what? Uh, let me get back to you or I'm going to do my best or I can't right now, but think of me next time. Do you know what I mean? I was like, I I should be very, very careful with my word because I want to be in integrity. And that might mean that I can't say yes to everything Mm -hmm. or I might say not now. So, and then authenticity, for example, I just said about the podcast. Okay. Well, you know, it would be great to have these names come up in a keyword search, but I don't drive, like it, it doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel aligned. So, you know what? I rather go with what feels right to me, what feels aligned to me, than what looks good on paper. I don't want to build a mile wide and a foot deep. I want deep roots. And I know for that, it might take a little bit longer and that's okay. Mm -hmm. But for that, that, that means I could put my head down on my pillow at night and, and feel good about it rather than icky. I don't want to feel icky. (laughs) So, so those are the two things there. So again, there's going to be a worksheet. So look at it. There's 250 (laughs) core values on there. Now, obviously, when you look at them, I think there are going to be some key ones that stand out. And then it's, all right, take a moment, define, define what that means to you, um, that core value. And then the next step is get honest about where you are in your relationship with that core value. And that's okay if it's not, you're, you're not completely aligned. But once you once you define those things, it's so much easier to notice when you're out of alignment, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's why we need to identify self-limiting beliefs. Because when you identify them, you notice when you say that thing that's self-deprecating and you're like, well, that's not really what I should be saying about myself, right? So once mm-hmm. you identify things and you shine the light on them, it's easy to identify. But if you don't, you can't really move forward in a practice until you've done that. So you need clarity and it's okay if you're not quite there. Um, and as I, you know, mentioned every choice you make in alignment with your core values is going to reinforce your identity. So, and practicing that is a muscle. You don't have that right away. You don't go from lifting five pounds to lifting 50, <laughs> right? It's a muscle. No. <laughs> so over time with compassion, come back to center. Okay. These are my core values. Okay. You know what? I did that thing. Even to take a moment and say, you know what? I responded in a way that was not loving even to take a moment and reflect back and say, that was not according to my core values. That right there is huge. That's the first step. And over time you can practice. And the more you practice that muscle, the more innate it comes to you. But at the beginning, it could feel really, you know, imposter syndrome. It could feel really strange because you're not practiced in that identity. Should I text that guy back? Should I take that client? I don't know. I'm not really sure. Okay you know, some reflecting, and then you practice that muscle. There are things now that even if the, you know, decision was to have to be made and I made it, um, maybe three years ago, I would have been more conflicted. Even now, if it's like, ugh, that sucks, I'm still more practiced and it becomes easier to, to step into that than before. I'm not confused. I'm not conflicted. I might be bummed, <laughs> but 
I'm not conflicted like I was before. So it's a muscle that you practice and being practiced in that identity. At first it's imposter syndrome, doesn't feel natural, but over time it will. And then those choices become a lot easier to make, even if they're not pleasant. So Veronica, basically what I'm hearing you say is that these core values really support us into like navigating our decision making in terms of like the behaviors that we engage in, um, kind of give us the framework and that it's in alignment with what we believe in. Like our, am I, am I saying it correctly? <laughs> like oh, it's, it's, I'm I'm not quite understanding, but that's okay. <laughs> we can keep trying. So, so like what I'm trying to say is like, basically they are kind of like a guiding, guiding force that supports in, us in navigating like whatever decisions that we make. It's always coming from like the centeredness, this um, core ideas that we truly believe and embody. Like so that it's consistent. It's not like one day we make decisions based on, whatever we feel like, and then the next day, so that there's just that structure. Exactly. It's just, it, it does take that confusion out of it mm -hmm. because you can fall back and you can self-audit to that. And again, the more you practice in that, the easier it'll become. And then that self-confidence builds in your business yeah. and everything else. You're able to say no to things. You're able to, you know, move past them. You're able to refocus um, because, again, those are based in principles. They're not based in feelings. So personally, in my personal life, my professional life, it's been one of the most uh, freeing aspects for me. Do you know why? Because life is not necessarily easy and choices sometimes are complicated. Toward, you know, they can be confusing. Yeah. I have not found something else that has made such a, like a big impact in my life than identifying my core values. Mm -hmm. um, it's interesting how you can take a principle, it's, it's simple, but how impactful it can actually be. And especially now as people, I know they have an opportunity to start over, some of them do, or some of them need to pivot, coming back to that place of center and building from something that does not change, that can't be blown away, you know? Mm -hmm. that's, that's what you want to be building your, your life on. I don't want anybody to go through what I went through three years ago where everything just like quicksand disappears because yeah. I know that no matter what happens in my life now, I've built that confidence and identity and nobody can take that away. You see? So uh -huh. I can always build from something, even if everything on top gets, you know, wiped away. I know there's a firm foundation that I can always start over and, and be confident and self-assured regardless of what's happening around me and what chaos is happening around me because my core values, my true North, it didn't change. So from what I'm hearing you, and that's basically like your foundation underneath everything that you build upon your relationship, your business. Um, so when we have these core values so clear in our minds, in our, um, you know, in our souls that we know these are core values, does this support you when, for example, sometimes like when things are starting to not work out in your business, in your life, does it give you more clarity on like to see oh maybe because i was not living in alignment with this like does it help you problem solve faster because you know your core values yeah absolutely and um you know i also find that it's it's interesting because with everything that's happened right now i started my agency um serving podcasters and it really came from a place of serving it came my core values. It didn't come from a place of wanting to monetize. It didn't at all, <laughs> you know, and I gave so much and I got an incredible return. And it was because it came from that place of love, you know, integrity, gratitude, courage, authenticity. So even though necessarily the circumstances I don't understand, I didn't, I still operated from that place. And from there, again, it's that culture. It, it was like the planting seeds that could only cultivate one thing. And it was the things that were in alignment with that. Mm, I, I love what, how you explain that you're cultivating the culture intentionally. It's just like living life with intention. So, so I guess the next piece, I think that's what, where you were going into too, is how we can step into action that's in alignment with these core values. Like how do you, do you always like plan ahead or how do we take these like abstract ideas of like core values and then kind of implement that throughout like our everyday life? 
So, you know, with the work worksheet, again, go and define those things for yourself. And that's how you self audit. Take that against the opportunities that you have. Um, there's a lot of people in different businesses, I'm sure. So I'm not going to say I have a strategy necessarily for everybody, but that's what principles are really great um, with because you can apply those to anything. So whether it is your romantic life, whether it is your um, business life, whether it's opportunities that are coming right now, whether it's like, how should I monetize this? Is this an integrity or not? Once you define that, take those very simply and, and audit all these other aspects of your life. And it is okay, again, if the answer is it's not. And as I said, you know, you've got to practice this muscle and there might be a bit of a grieving process. There was a grieving process in letting go of things that were dear to my heart, but not in alignment with my values. I had to let go of opportunities. I had to let go of people. I had to let go of relationships. I left my country. I went from Ontario and here I am in, in uh, California um, with not very much to my name uh, starting over. So there's a lot of grieving that happened, but I feel like oftentimes that's what needs to happen. You kind of have to uproot certain things. You need to really just like clear you know, the land sometimes in order to make space for the things that you truly want. So I felt like there was almost like a, a drought followed right after because I had to start pulling up a lot of weeds and it was, it was, it was difficult. So if people are, you know, they identify their core values and now they're identifying all these things that don't align, I, I feel for you. I completely understand, but it's interesting the the faster you act in, cultivating that culture that's in alignment, the faster mm -hmm. you're going to see return, but it is like planting seeds. Mm -hmm. So I made in, you know, intentionally, I started to look for people that had good nature and had those qualities I was looking for. I looked for business, you know, collaborations and opportunities and uh, projects that were in alignment. So there was um, a transition period. So mm -hmm. I want to be compassionate and gracious and saying, I understand if it's difficult but it does get easier. So when you have that, you self audit, and then you know the decisions you need to make. I don't think the decisions are, um, I don't think it's difficult to know what the right decision is. Sometimes it's difficult to make it, and I completely understand. But the more you practice, the easier that will get over time. Mm, so depending on where you are in your life and your own, I'm all about the hero journey where you are in your own hero journey. Um, it might be that gut wrenching a part of your life and I uh, feel for you, but there's always that hurrah moment. There's always those hero moments that come up and you have to be your own hero. And the only way you can do that is by making the hard choices. Um, and I'm not saying you got to do it all at once, get practiced at one thing. You know, when I was going through recovery, I knew I had a lot of things that I needed to improve. And I started with one thing. I was like, okay, well, you know what? I got to move my body. <laughs> I'm saying health is important to me. And obviously I'm not living in alignment with that. And, uh, you know, it'd be great to have this big goal of going to the gym for an hour every day. But what I did is I put on my, my workout clothes that were a little bit too tight because I gained weight. And uh, I hung a right outside of my apartment building and started running the stairwell because nobody would ever take the stairs there really. So I made a choice and I, I took one step in direction that was more in alignment with my values. One step. And that's the thing is we overvalue grand gestures while undervaluing consistency. So whatever your goals are, whatever the steps you need to take, don't think about it like snakes and ladders. Like here you are with your goal and sometimes you're up and then you go down and up and down, you know, your goals high performing habits, all these kinds of things. It's a pyramid. Each habit is a block, a building block to the next thing. And the top goal, it's all supported by these other, you know, high performing habits or, you know, decisions in alignment with your core values. So it could be with your business. You can't pivot everything entirely right away. Take one step in the yeah. direction of that core value or in alignment with that core value. So be gracious with yourself. Um, prioritize consistency over grand gestures. And slowly you can start turning that uh, culture around. Mm, this is so good. And I hope our listeners are really like getting this idea that, you know, by doing these 26 days 
um, to greatness challenge and these 10 bonus episodes I'm putting together. It's like so powerful in itself that we are getting the awareness. The first step is like being aware of what things that we can um, get, get to work on, but it doesn't end right here, right now. Obviously, like this is a long process to cultivate the, that culture, to get to know our core values, and then we got to implement that for the rest of our life. Like it doesn't stop right here. So I hope our listeners are really getting that picture because like Veronica, just like what you're sharing right now, all the, a lot of the other experts are on this series, they are sharing amazing insights and tools and strategies. But this 30 minutes right here will not change your life unless you put it into work, right? <laughs> it's true. It's true. I know. I know. So, you know, that's a, it's like all the love songs, right? You don't really get it until you have your heart broken. And you're like, oh, yeah. So maybe one day somebody would be like thinking back and be like, Veronica said that thing. It makes so much sense now. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, <laughs> what, what you're doing here, you know, I'm so honored and appreciative. It's like you're planting the seeds in their minds because when they listen to it, maybe once or twice and three times, and then when stuff like that shows up in their life, they will catch it and be like, oh, that's the thing that Veronica talked about. And then I can and shift and pivot um, and pull out these tools in the toolbox to to really live in alignment to the core value. So this was amazing. Veronica, is there anything that's missing that we didn't get to touch on yet that you wanted well, to share? Um, no, I think like that, that's a good start. I don't want to overwhelm people. So, uh, you know, do the worksheet and you know what, here, here's the thing. Again, I was starting from a place of depression, addiction, everything have, you know, falling apart. There was a lot of things I had to fix. Um, so I want to really encourage people, be compassionate with yourself. The way to know if you're being compassionate, people are like, well, how do you take responsibility, but not beat yourself up? It's like, it's one thing to say, Hey, I messed up. Okay. I got to change another thing to project those things into the future where you're like, I always mess up. I never, do you know what I mean? So right there, that's a yeah. good way to self audit because again, shame will keep you, it will steal your motivation. So in order to pivot, in order to change, in order to keep, you know, pressing on, even when you do fall, even when you do mess up, even when you make a mistake, you've got to be compassionate with yourself. So in order to self audit, to make sure that you're being, you're, you're being compassionate with yourself. See when you actually that you made a mistake? Are you coming from a place of compassion or shame? If you're projecting that idea into the future, then that's coming from a place of shame. I always this, I always that, you know? But to say, hey, I made a mistake. Why? Because I, maybe I'm operating from, you know, past hurts and triggers and everything else. Well, okay, got to work on that. Let's move on. So I just, uh, I really want to to stress that, you know, be compassionate with yourself. Keep, keep trying. I can't tell you how many times I had to pick myself up and I constantly do. And that's an amazing skill to have, to be able to uh, try again. It's a, being able to try again is an amazing skill. It's worth just as much as anything else really for um, life skills. So if you can pick yourself up and dust yourself off, you are going to succeed <laughs> through persistence, <laughs> if anything uh. else. That's so good. And, you know, I, I feel it a hundred percent. Like when I started my personal development journey, when I am super aware of all the little things that I got to fix and that I would beat myself up when, when, you know, I'm, I didn't do what I knew I needed to do. But I think I want our listeners to kind of remember this, like there is momentum that comes from years and years of like our habits and patterns. Like we're not just going to magically get rid of that like the moment yeah. we want to so so kind of just kind of want to remind the listeners so compassion and grace is such a powerful um things to hold space for us when we go on this journey um veronica where can our listeners find you online and continue to learn from you because obviously there is so much more that you know you have to share and I'm sure that they would love to continue to learn from you, get access to your worksheet and all of that fun stuff. Yeah. So veronicaabrams.com, I've got a download section with this worksheet and several others. So now that I've pivoted into my agency, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to take all those coaching worksheets, just put them online. So there's a lot there. There's an environment audit. Um, there's a manifestation formula. So uh, I would definitely say go there, Instagram, Facebook, Veronica Abrams. So uh, Veronica spelled with a K. 
names, ABR, AMS. And then if you like these hero stories, they really encouraged me, then uh, tune into the podcast, Hero Academy podcast, and listen to other people, industry leaders, successful entrepreneurs, but they really talk about their origin stories and Again, I think that really bridges the gap with hope because we think, you know, hey, they had it all together. Oh, no, we've all gone, you know, gone through our own journey. So uh, those are the, the stories that encourage me. So I really hope that they encourage others. Oh, I love that. I'm going to have to check out that podcast, too, because like you said, we see that people have these massive success and we think that it happens overnight. But to be able to relate to their stories, the humble beginnings like that gives so much inspiration. So. I'm going to go check out the podcast and I'll be including Veronica's, um, all of her website, her social media platforms, um, and how to access her worksheet on the same email that this interview went out to. So just go back, get access to it, stay connected with Veronica and let us know what your biggest takeaways were from this um, episode today, because I know Veronica would love to hear from you as well. Absolutely. And, <laughs> Before we wrap this up, Veronica, I want to say thank you so much today for sharing your story with us, your amazing insights and your expertise, your wisdom with our listeners today. Like I'm sure they appreciate you so much too. Um, do you have any last words to wrap this up before we close it off today? Uh, you know what? Just thank you so much, Nico. This has been lovely and yeah, you know, I told, you know, one of my core values is love. So I really put, you know, at the end of the day, just come back to love. That's a, that's a good place to start. Oh, thank you, everyone. I will see you on our next bonus episode. And until then, make sure you go do some homework and implement. Thanks, Veronica. Thank you.